Today, I am excited to share the Word of God with you, so let's get started. I started feeling like God wanted me to teach here on having a thankful attitude. So we can't talk about being thankful if we don't also talk about complaining. The C word. <laughs> and grumbling. And fault finding. And I know none of you do that. <laughs> but if you want to buy the CD tonight, you can order a copy of it and give it to all your grouchy friends. <laughs> but I want to say this, and I'm not just saying this to be saying it. I believe that what you hear tonight, if you really take it into your life and you put it to work in your everyday life, I believe it has the power to change your life. Amen. The Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness trying to make what the Bible says was an 11 day journey. Now that's really pretty dumb. But which one of us can't say, been there, done that? And one of their big problems was they kept murmuring and complaining. Instead of being thankful, they complained a lot. And if we can only be thankful when we've got everything we want, then we don't even begin to know anything about having Christ-like character. Anybody, even a, even a sinner that doesn't know a thing about God can be thankful when everything's going their way. So the big thing for us is to learn how to be just as thankful when things aren't going good as we are when things are going good because even when things are not going good in our life, we still have hope and we know that there's nothing that God can't fix. So we don't wait till it's fixed to start being thankful. We start thanking God in the middle of our mess. We find something else in our life that is working. We find some body part that does feel okay. We find something our spouse is doing right. We find something about our job that we can endure and be happy about. Amen? There's always something to be happy about. I said there's always something. Do you have any idea how much complaining goes up out of this land every day about the circumstances in America? And yet things just keep getting worse. What if everybody replaced all those complaints with finding something to be thankful for, as well as praying for the problems, I bet God could work things out a whole lot quicker. We can't just, we cannot just talk about the problems in our life if we ever want them to be solved. Now, let me say something from the get-go. I know there's people in here tonight that you are really hurting, really hurting. I mean, Pastor Mike came and told me that there's a lady here that, who lost her daughter. She was killed in a car accident here in Phoenix two weeks ago. And here she is now, two weeks later, sitting here, ready to receive the word. I tell you what, I admire that. And I can tell you that's somebody that will have victory in her life. And she's only really been studying the Word like six months. She started watching our TV program about six months ago, and she said things started so radically changing inside her that she had enough common sense to know when she had this tragedy, the place to go was to God's house and to God's Word. All right, we are going to look at a lot of scriptures. I sat and looked every one of these up before I came over here tonight, even though I could probably quote most of them. Because I love just looking at the scripture. I think there's something about just seeing it that affects us. So 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. But if one loves God truly, everybody say truly. truly. With affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessings. He is known by God recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love 
and he is owned by him. So he's saying true love for God is not just going to church on a weekly basis. It's not just saying, I love God. But one who truly loves God is going to have affectionate reverence, a reverent attitude toward God, an honoring attitude toward God. I prayed tonight that as I preached, that there would be great respect for the Word of God. We need to show reverence for the Word of God. That's part of loving God is being reverent about what He's given us. Prompt obedience and thankful recognition of all of his blessings. Now, so everybody say, I love God. <laughs> so therefore, I am very thankful. First Thessalonians 5, 18. Thank God in everything. <laughs> in everything. So let me just stop and ask, what's going on in your life that you have been murmuring about and you haven't once taken the time in that situation to say, well, God, this is happening and this is not fun and this hurts, but here's 10 things I'm thankful for. Nobody needed that, okay? <laughs> Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be, be thankful and give thanks. And this is something that I want to press tonight is the giving of thanks. I think if I said, how many of you are thankful? You'd all put your hand up. I'm thankful. But you know what I'm learning? Being thankful and giving thanks is two entirely different things. And we not only need to give thanks to God, but we need to thank people that are in our lives that are a blessing to us. Don't take people for granted. Do you know how many divorces could be eliminated if people in their homes were just using good manners within the family? No, maybe this section would like that. <laughs> Amen, I, I see you guys up there. And we've even got spies over in that overflow room, so just, I'll have them give me a report on how you acted while I was preaching. Just being thankful. 76 times in the Bible it says give thanks. So be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Now, you know, everybody wants to know what God's will is for them. Well, what is God's will? What does he want me to do? And you know what? I think sometimes we just need to do what we can see. And then God will reveal the rest of it to us. I mean, I mean that. I think if, if you don't know what it is that God wants you to do or what he wants you to do about a certain situation, do, do what you know to do to pray about it and then just stay busy Serving the Lord with gladness, being a thankful person, loving God, being a blessing to people. And when God wants to tell you something, you will hear him. He, ha he has no problem making himself known when he wants to. Now, this scripture that we all get pretty excited about, Romans 8, 28, it is a great scripture, but I want to give you a little more insight on it. We are sure to know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God. And if we love God, we're going to be what? Thankful, Thankful. right? Let's all be in agreement. Thankful, all right are fitting into a plan far good to and for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So here's what I think. We have a very difficult situation. Something's happened that's really hurt us. Life has been lousy. We, we've had a great loss. We've had a great injustice. Somebody has rejected us. Somebody has hurt us. Okay. So this is one of these situations where I'm supposed to be giving thanks, even though I feel like 
I can't hardly stand to breathe. I think in the midst of that, if you find other things to be thankful for, that's what God uses. Come on now, I said that's what God uses to take all of those things and then cause them eventually, somehow, miraculously to work out for good. And that doesn't mean that the painful thing that happened to you was ever good, but it means that God can make it work out for good. And I don't know how God does that, but I know that even though I was abused as a child and had a very lousy start in life, never got to really be a child, don't ever remember being happy until I was in my 20s, did not ever get to have any fun, got in trouble for laughing as a child. I mean, I had a really bad beginning and I was getting nowhere as long as I was grumbling and murmuring and complaining and feeling sorry for myself and being mad at everybody who had a good life. It was only when I started finding things to be thankful for. You know what, when God asked me to start taking care of my mom and dad as they got older, I mean, I thought that was just about the most unfair thing that God could possibly ask me to do. You have got to be kidding. And this is what I said, what did they ever do for me? And you know what I heard in my spirit? You're breathing, aren't you? I mean, they had me. And so here I am, you know, didn't have a good beginning, but I'm having a good finish. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.